in efforts to respond to climate-related challenges and an endeavor to see progress in the implementation of Lesotho's National Adaptation Program of Action for Climate Change, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, initiated a project on climate change adaptation for Lesotho's agricultural sector. This pilot project commenced in 2009 and ended in 2011. It was funded under the FAO Technical Cooperation Program. The Technical Cooperation Program, known as TCP, is a, a kind of bridging mechanism whereby we try to show that there are techniques that are out there that can be implemented to address some situation. In this case, it's climate change. The purpose of this project was to make smallholder and subsistence farmers more resilient to climate change. Focusing on selected areas of crops, livestock and forest-based livelihood systems, this project was piloted in three out of Lesotho's ten districts. It was piloted in Ranzimani in Tabazaka district, in Hamafa in Mafiten district and in Mabalani in Mahalisuk district. These were the communities identified in the National Adaptation Program of Action for Climate Change as the most vulnerable to climate change. Although the project worked directly with a few farmers selected by farmers themselves, it reached out to a total number of close to 3,000 farmers in the three agroecological zones. The project identified and promoted relevant climate adaptation practices that are strongly rooted within the local context. Maize is the staple food crop in Lesotho. While it can be highly productive during good rainfall years, it is notoriously sensitive to erratic and below normal rainfall. The project demonstrated water harvesting schemes as a viable climate adaptation strategy. It's a lot cheaper to buy a plastic tent. The durability of it uh, is uh, you know, at least uh, 10, 15 years. And so that must be uh, sustainable uh, enough. Matle Kitsoledi, one of the farmers who received a plastic water tank through the project, has seven members in her household. She now has enough water for household use and for small-scale irrigation. Considering cost implications, topography, skills requirements and Lesotho's climate change scenario, the project promoted gravity-fed irrigation. The preferred adaptive gravity-fed irrigation technology was the drip irrigation system. With this method, farmers use less water and there's less evaporation. In Lesotho, meals are based on maize and vegetables in the majority of households. The project supported the keyhole garden concept and homestead vegetable gardening as a climate adaptation practice. Vegetable gardening, together with a humble poultry business, can make a household more resilient to climate change. Chickens require no grazing pasture. They are housed and therefore protected from elements of adverse climate. They are selling these chickens to other nearby villages. If time goes on, in order to enable them to be sustainable, they are going to sell that within the district. We, the Minister of Agriculture, we are going to assist them. The establishment of an orchard for the Dipirin community in Mahalisuk district was a demonstration of another strategy for strengthening farmers' resilience to climate change. The planting of fruit trees is a good starting point for further advancement of agroforestry, strengthening livelihoods, improving food security, increasing fodder production and climate change adaptation. The, the people will benefit from the, the peach trees as food food security and then also the grass which grows on the on the on the ground that will be used for fodder for animals so that's the the, the, the kind of agroforestry that will both benefit the animals and uh, 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 the people in Hamafa in Mafiten district Mamuchijana Mutanyani and other farmers were supported with fruit tree seedlings for establishing homestead gardens to respond to household food security needs and livestock needs. Mm -hmm. 
tse fueng di fate tsena me di fate tsena di boloka mongwe di pakeng tsa tsona mona ke le mafuru ho fepa di phofoa livestock farmers have few options for coping with the impact of climate change Climate change reduces the amount of grazing pasture and watering points, subjecting livestock to increasing incidence of diseases. For the livestock sector, the project demonstrated fodder production on crop farmlands. We, with livestock, uh, we, we're talking livestock crop interactions. In a country like Lesotho, you can't ignore that the livestock must also uh, feed on the residues. Now, uh, we, we're promoting uh, planting of fodder crops in the, in the winter and also fodder crops in the summer. Uh, in this project in particular right now, we're going to be demonstrating uh, fodder sorghum production, which is a type of sorghum very hardy, like sorghum in terms of uh, drought resistance or drought tolerance. And it is a, a very fast growing a forage crop that can be cut two, three times in a, in a good year, uh, still regrowing. So it would uh, address the livestock uh, feed and it would also uh, respond to, to changing climate because it is hardy, drought tolerant, and because it's, uh, it produces a uh, forage that can be cut two, three times in a season, then you are able to, to address the livestock pressure. With climate change, affordable methods of increasing soil fertility rates and water holding capacity are an important adaptation response. The demonstration of conservation agriculture amongst crop farmers proved to be a viable climate adaptation practice. Tsidiso Mahale, a smallholder farmer with 11 members in his household, attained a good maize yield through application of better conservation agriculture techniques. Among other strategies for strengthening farmers' resilience to climate change, the project advocates for availability of easy-to-understand weather forecasting information to vulnerable farmers. Weather and climate variations directly affect land use water availability and agriculture production in Lesotho. Smallholder farmers, uh, livestock herders are highly vulnerable to these impacts. Provision of weather and climate information, timely and that are reliable to the farmers, enhances their opportunity in good seasons and reduces the impacts of climate variability in bad seasons. This requires strengthening of user interface platform that brings in both climate information providers and users. Collaboration between Lesotho Meteorological Services and agriculture support institutions is the first priority. Capacity development to understand and also interpret weather and climate information that is useful to the end users is the second priority. In the project, FAO has facilitated a training program to interpret climate information and to strengthen weather and climate information use in agriculture sector. A project wrap-up workshop was held for relevant district technical staff, policy makers and other stakeholders. The overall aim of organizing the project wrap-up workshop was to share experience gained and lessons learned from this project. We have learned some lessons, we have seen some adaptation strategies that uh, seem to work. There are gaps that have been identified, but we really need to pick up on those and see how we can address concretely you know, uh, on those by developing uh, you know, a larger scale kind of project. There are some valuable lessons learned from this technical cooperation project. It was the first project to pick up the ideas of the National Adaptation Program of Action of Lesotho and put them on the ground, thus contributing to national priorities. Second, it benefited from an integrated approach where crop, 
livestock, irrigation, and forestry experts worked hand in hand together at the community level. Third, it provided continuous testing and validation of field practices to respond to agroecological conditions. This has made them relevant to local conditions and resulted in higher uptake. Fourth, and finally, the project, the adaptation projects need initial investment to take root at the community level. As witnessed in this TCP project, some of the adaptation practices, such as water harvesting schemes and the keyhole garden, would have not been affordable to female-headed household and poor farmers. The Minister of Agriculture, through Extension Services, we are working together with the farmers. We are going to continue to learn and also continue again, maybe to develop more strategies which are suitable, based on the one which we already have when working with FAO. One of the gratifying things about this TCP is that some of the project activities have been followed by local communities and government. Most importantly, it has also served to be the foundation of the recently approved Global Environmental Facility Project for Lesotho. This project has potential for upscaling and replicating in other districts of Lesotho.